with the recording. Got it. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to the spring 2023 BFA thesis, senior thesis conversations. My name is Aspen Mays, and my pronouns are she and her, and I'm the chair of the photography program here at the California College of the Arts. Um, before we begin the program, I want to say it's my great pleasure and privilege to celebrate our students tonight and all of the inspiring work that they've made during their time here and their extraordinary resilience in completing their degrees during a pandemic. And for our transfer students, also the closure of the San Francisco Art Institute. So this is a huge accomplishment and we're so proud and happy to be um, celebrating all of you today. I'm gonna also um, read a brief land acknowledgement before we get started. Uh, California College of the Arts campuses are located in Weichen and Yulamu, also known as Oakland and San Francisco, respectively, on the unceded territories of Chochino and Ramayatush Ohlone peoples, who have continuously lived upon this land since time immemorial. We recognize the historic discrimination and violence inflicted upon indigenous peoples in California and the Americas, including their forced removal from ancestral lands and the deliberate and systematic destruction of their communities and culture. CCA honors indigenous peoples, past, present, and future here and around the world, and we wish to pay respect to local elders, including those of the lands from which you are joining us virtually today. Um, I, you'll notice I, I, I've also kept Oakland there and the acknowledgement that's really been the historical location of our um, photography program. This really marks the first our first year fully in San Francisco, so I want to also honor our roots as a program. Uh, today, we're going to be celebrating four photography seniors, Jaden Fuhrer, Anna McKenzie, Bijan Shi, Androgyny King, and Jajimi Gabiola. Each senior will, be, will give a 10-minute presentation uh, introducing their work, and after each presentation, we'll have a 10-minute conversation with the student providing feedback and asking questions. Um, please note that we don't and we won't have time during this event for a public Q&A, but we'll, we encourage attendees to drop comments and affirmations for the seniors in the Zoom chat. The chat trans transcript will be saved at the end of this event and will be sent to the seniors as a sort of virtual guest book. Um, and as I mentioned for the audience, please remember to keep yourselves muted during the program. At the very end, we'll all unmute and give a nice warm round of applause. I do have to say, I think that the chat transcript is really special. So please don't um, hesitate to really um, shower them with some love and affection in the chat. Uh, and then also before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge my, um, the, my fellow faculty members in the photography program, Chris Johnson and Nelson Chan, who have both been teaching senior projects this semester and who have worked really closely with all of our graduating seniors. And we're so lucky and pleased to have a beloved curator, Shana Lopes, joining us this afternoon. Um, friend of the program, we're so happy to have you here. I'm gonna turn it over to Nelson to introduce our guest. Um, thank you, Aspen. So uh, we are so lucky to have Dr. Lopes here. <laughs> Shana Lopes holds a PhD from Rutgers University, which is from New Jersey, my home state. Um, and Shana Lopes is also a uh, native San Franciscan. So I think that's really special. Um, so Shana Lopes is assistant curator of photography at SF MoMA here in San Francisco. Since her arrival at the museum in 2019, Shana has organized exhibitions in Sinotypes, the 1906 earthquake, Ache, Wright Morris. She is a co-curator of Constellations, Photographs and Dialogue, which pairs recently uh, recent acquisitions with existing work from the collections the A Living Among Us All Artists and the WPA, which opened in March 2020. Over the past 14 years, she has gained curatorial experience at the Center for Creative Photog uh, Photography in Tucson, Arizona, and the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Um, Shana also uh, was a co-curator for Sightlines as well in SF MoMA, also was incredibly instrumental in the uh, Besher's show that um, was up. I don't remember if it's still up, but if it is, it's incredible. I, yeah, it came down already, unfortunately, but um, was instrumental in that really fantastic, important exhibition. And um, we're just so lucky to be able to have you here with us. Thank you so much, Shana. Thank you so much for having me. And I just want to say I feel honored to be here to celebrate everybody and it's an important moment and I think we should all just 
just take a minute and like be proud um, of what you've accomplished. I've looked at everyone's work and I'm really excited to talk about it. Um, yeah, I'm here to support and to guide. Um, I'm not here to judge. And so I can't wait to hear your presentations. Amazing. I think that's a perfect um, note to start with. And uh, Jaden, you're going to start us off. So whenever you're ready, go ahead and share your screen and uh, take it away. Oh, dear. There's so many things in the way. Hold on. Can you all see that or is it there we go all righty hello everyone my name is Jaden Fuhrer um this is my BFA thesis uh talking about my book that I created titled Sonder um but uh whoop, too far so what we'll be viewing we'll start off with who I am and like why I do these things um and then we'll go into my prior work before CCA, as well as like a tiny little bit during, and then uh, my thesis. So starting off with me, who am I? Uh, I'm 23 years old, I'm from Southern California. I was born in San Diego, but I was relocated to Yucca Valley, which is about 30 miles outside of Joshua Tree. And I spent my formative, like middle and high school years in Orange County. There in Orange County, when after I finished school, I uh, did a fashion design program through Orange Coast College. And while I was doing that, I was still like working on my own photography just in my personal life because that's what I was really passionate about. And thus started my journey to transferring to CCA. Um, this is going to be the only slide with a lot of text on it. Um, but this is my artist statement, and so I'll, I'll read read this. Um, Growing up in Southern California with artist parents was a blessing to my life, as they were always encouraging the development of my artistic expression. Starting from a young age, I was keen to pick up a pencil or pen and draw on every acceptable surface imaginable. As I got older, I found myself gravitating towards other mediums like ceramics and fashion design, but from 16 years old and beyond, I was serious about photography being my choice. I started my journey with photography by taking editorial styled portraits of friends and girlfriends, but it wasn't until I took a trip abroad when I was 20 that I fell in love with the idea of photographing the feelings of the world around me. Having an immigrant parent, I was always aware of cultural differences each place, the cultural differences that each place holds, but it wasn't until I assimilated myself into a foreign place that I realized that even through our differences, we all long for the same end result, to be heard, to be seen, and to be loved. And after moving to San Francisco with this idea in my head, I looked at my roommates, mentors, and friends to find inspiration to begin building upon what I believe to be my first grand idea. As I move forward in my art career and balance a day job with channeling my artistic expression, I'm inspired to create an experience that will invoke the senses and create an experience my viewers can feel. Leaning on my own feelings and relationships only helps further this experience I hope to share. So what I studied before photography, I actually changed my major three times before I ended up with photography. And so I did fashion design and sustainability and I received a certificate of completion and associate's degree from Orange Coast College. Um, I studied English. After one year of doing English, I realized I did not wanna be an English teacher. And then right after that, I did political science. I learned a lot about politics and I can talk about them all day. I just didn't wanna do it for a job. So into my prior work. So a lot of this is going to be portraiture as well as I used to do like what I considered at the time to be like timeless car photography. Um, but really it was mainly like portraits of my friends and portraits of people in my fashion program and anybody that I found just like visually appealing or just had an interesting uh, aesthetic to them. I was mainly going for like the aesthetic feelings. At this time, I was also working with like quite a bit of musicians. And so this is uh, John Roseboro, who's a bossa nova musician out of Georgia, and he employed me to do a photo shoot for him as well. Um, but it was mainly just portraits of friends as well as like these very quote unquote timeless looking photos of like old cars that I would find. I would just ride my skateboard around, especially at the start of the pandemic and just take photos of 
like the cool cars in like the neighboring towns. And then we'll go into my thesis. Um, and so Sonder, what does that even mean? So to quote some famous guy, Oh, let's go. Saunder. Saunders the realization that each random passerby is living a life as vivid and complex as your own, populated with their own ambitions, friends, routines, worries, and inherited craziness. An epic story that continues invisibly around you, like an anthill sprawling deep underground with elaborate passageways to thousands of other lives that you'll never know existed, in which you might appear only once as an extra sipping coffee in the background, as a blur of traffic passing on the highway, as a lighted window at dusk. That's by John Koenig. And so what this means to me, uh, I chose this because I believe it is an indication of my own personal humanity. Alongside this, it makes me look at how I view people differently. Everyone on planet Earth is no longer a stranger, but a story waiting to be learned or to be, to, to be observed. In the lightest way possible, it minimizes my own existence to the point where I realize that all I can do is better the people around me and live this short life we all share to the best of my own ability. And so getting into the images, this is going to be the work, which will be where we'll end this. Um, so a lot of these images I have taken, some of them go back as far as like seven years, but it's more of like a year and a half, two year long project that I've been working on that with Nelson as well, he, he helped me through this immensely. And it is just a collection of photographs that showcase this feeling. And so here are some spreads from the, the book that I produced um, at for the Soma Art Show. And I went with black and white because I felt that color was, th there's a lot more formal aspects of design that come with the usage of color and understanding color. And so it wasn't just uh, something that I thought would be quote unquote easier. I just thought that it portrayed this, I don't want to use the word flat, but it it made things more consistent in tone and feeling without having to worry about like saturation and luminances, many of other things. Um, but on top of this, so here's the front cover of the book that I created, which is 17 by 22 inches long. Um, and then when open, it's 44 by 17. And uh, here's just a few images from the inside of it. Here's the center spread, which ended up on the wall and then so here's for the soma art show and then these are the photos of the exhibition that were given to us by the photographer of soma arts and that's my thesis thank you Thank you, Jaden. Should I just yeah, go please. for it? Is that... <laughs> um, um, I was wondering, would it be possible, Jaden, for you to share your screen again? Um, and maybe let's put up some images of your thesis project. Um, I just, I want to say, I think the pairings are stunning. Um, they're, they're different enough in terms of, um, like I love how the white street, the street lights mimic the the flowers here. Um, and I guess what I'd love to talk a little bit about is I think the images together as a whole really work. And I'm curious though about the title. And I'm I for some reason it throws me off because these pictures sometimes don't feel about people and the complexity of their life. It's like what I see in the pictures or what they're telling me is about um the kind of beauty and ephemerality and these beautiful connections between uh these images and i almost i almost wonder if a different title would like would help the project in some way i don't know I, i'm wondering for you did the pro like did the title come first and then the pictures or did the title come at the end um i think it, i think it's both so I I found the word 
I knew I wanted to make like a book project and like a sequenced set of work. Um, and then I found the word. And so I was really trying to use my archive as well as produce images that would help benefit this project and build this like and revolve around the word. Um, but so I think they, they kind of came at the same time. Like, I, I don't think that there was a, a sequence of what came before and when. Um, because I, the pictures are, are just stunning. They're, they're beautiful. Maybe go to, yeah, actually that's fantastic. But go back. Um, I even think that, and just the way you, you mold light in the shadows. Um, and I guess the picture on the right, yes, it does speak to like an individual and the complexity of life, uh, of their life and how maybe, you know, they have a, a, a background or, or whatnot, a, a story to tell. Um, but some of the pictures, yeah, I don't, and I don't know why I'm, I'm doting on the, the title, but um, the pictures speak for themselves beyond the title. And I'm not sure I would even go into that much depth on the title uh, um, to introduce your readers to these pictures. Um, I also, if you could go to the installation view. You, you introduced the project as a book project, correct? Yes. Um, and so um, do you think of it first as a book before um, physical prints on the wall? Um, I, I, don't, I don't think it would be fair for me to say that I even thought about that at all. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I did mainly think of it as a book, but um, yeah, I think, I, yes. And, and, that's, and that's totally fine. That's, you're exactly where you should be. Um, I think if you did decide to work more with um, physical pictures on the wall, um, I would play a little bit with scale. Um, I think, there are some pictures here that are so uh, powerful and um, and could hold a wall by itself even, um, especially the uh, the man in the shadow. Um, also, maybe uh, the suit picture. Um, I know Nelson chimed in about that in the chat. Um, but I would actually encourage you to play with printing uh, these and 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 when you talk about like the vividness and the complexity of life, I would try to mimic some of that language in your installation even. Um, if you can, I would try to, to have fun and play with this work because the pairings in the, in the book format are really powerful. And I'd love to see um, how you uh, transform that into a physical space as well. Um, yeah, if you can. Yeah, um, I think I didn't play with scale just mainly because I was thinking when I when I printed them, I did think of them as like individual like stills from the book. So yeah, oh, to answer your previous question, I definitely thought of it as a, as a book now that I think about it. But I think they just because you have a, a vision of them in a book format doesn't mean they can't also exist. Um, on the walls um, and in physical form. And it's interesting also how you pair the three in the that middle photograph. And so you are already playing with scale, right? Yeah, so the that's actually a floating frame. I wish that I had photos of it like on the wall a little closer, but that's a floating frame with the center image and there is a like an actual Polaroid that I took. So oh, I went, interesting. I more like the, the like floating object style. Of. And so is that picture that's the floating object, that's not in the book? Uh, that, that that's you... the centerfold that I- Will you go I back? Placed. So then should we see that one? I didn't realize that that was a, a Polaroid. Uh, okay, that one. And so you actually have like a physical Polaroid um, in the in that frame. Yes, sorry, I don't know why my space bar is coupled to next, but <laughs> don't worry. Oh, that's interesting. And so why may I ask, did you do that? That's I, I love it. I like that you uh, decided to add a polar to it. Um, 
I mean, to be entirely honest, I had printed, well, I was going to print it, and then it was Nelson's idea to you put it in the floating frame. And then I took the the whole triptych that lives on this page, or the whole spread, and I put each uh, each photo in there. So to show the, like, these are images, and then this is an actual object that is existent. Um. I don't know how we're doing on time. Um, do I have time to make another comment? You have about two minutes. Okay. Um, what I like about these pictures, and you could just maybe slowly go through uh, these fantastic spreads um, as I talk, is just uh, the way these are so uh, uh, dreamlike, but quotidian. They're just like these everyday moments, but what they encourage your viewers and myself to do is just think about how life can be so, um, can just be so enchanting like that. It's so dreamy, like not only do you have uh, this person in a suit and you can't tell really what's going on and, um, but then the, sh the tonalities that are at play in the, in the architectural study um, is just really exciting to look at. And that even, your pairings are really strong. Um, and I'm curious who you're inspired by. Like who, who are some photographers that you look to or thought about when you were creating this body of work? When, when making this body of work, I think, when I was picking the spreads, I definitely looked to like the Americans, um, mm -hmm just because of the painterly aspects of like usage of either like elements of design, like line shape, um, like color is not applicative here, but all of those. And then when it comes to like photographers that I look at, I, I'm mainly inspired when I go to take an image. So I would say that some of my most popular or most influential influences, um, would be like Rosie Matheson from uh, from London, as well as I have so, I have so many books. I'm trying to remember some <laughs> names. Um, there's an Austrian artist who made a book called Story No Story. I forget their name right now, but a lot of the images in that book um, allowed me to just like open up my mind to the idea of just like make, taking certain types of portraits or certain images. And a lot of them were tests as well. Like the image on the left here was just a developmental test. And I wanted to see what it would be like to shoot an image at minus three and then develop it at plus three. And this was the result as well as, um, the, the image on the right was an accident. I was, I was telling the the model to pose in a certain way, and I accidentally clicked the the shutter. And uh, I mean, that's what that big box in his face is is like the the hood on my RZ67 is just like in the light. And I, I have a plethora of influences, and I think it just depends on the, the day I'm going out shooting. I mean, what, what you just said to me tells me that, like, keep having accidents and keep testing, right? It, the more you experiment, you like, you never know what you'll get, especially when you're shooting analog or, or whatnot. And I just, um, these are fantastic accidents then for, with, for some of those. Thank you so much for sharing your work with me and, and everyone here. Thank you. Jaden, thank you so much. That was fantastic. Thank you. All right, Anna, you're up. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's good. Okay, great. Yeah, you're okay. good. Um. Sorry, I'm really nervous and I feel like there's a lot to get through here. Um, 
Anyway, um, hello, my name is Anna McKenzie, um, and I'm receiving my BFA in photography from CCA this spring of 2023. Um, I attended, or I began my education at the San Francisco Art Institute in 2018, and I transferred to CCA last fall um, when SVI closed. Um, I was born in San Francisco in 1995, and I grew up in North Beach with my older brother and both my parents. Uh, my parents are both artists. They're both painters, originally from the Midwest. Um, but they both had like regular jobs growing up. Um, and they kind of just moved here on a whim from Boston um, when, like in the 90s, when it was still possible for like a lower middle class family to raise a family in San Francisco. Um, and yeah, art, art and art making, you know, was always a big part of my life. Um, and I remember like growing up, um, you know, an artist was like the first thing I wanted to be when I grew up. And, you know, having the support of my family um, was just really like beneficial for me um, to have that support as a, as a child growing up in a creative household. Um, and I'd say like what motivates me to create is just like uh, this hunger for the world and like to feel really deeply and translate my feelings and express them. Um, and just like make use of my human vessel as much as I can. Um, and that's why I really enjoy photography so much because I get to engage with the visual world in front of me at any given moment. Um, you know, everything becomes part of some story and everything has the potential to be fictionalized in this really beautiful way to me. Um, I had my first photographic education through a free after school program in, in, when I was a sophomore in high school, um, which was my introduction to black and white film the dark room and some light photo history. Um, but I was also avidly on the internet at these ages and immersed in the world of digital photography in places like Tumblr, which actually proved to expose me to a decent repertoire of um, images from photo history. Um, I remember Sally Mann's work sticking out to me from a young age. I just remember seeing her photos and like not knowing from what time period they were from, like mistaking them from being made uh, in the 1900s or something like early 1900s. Um, and when I got to know more about her work, I was just struck by how she was um, like creating pictures that suggested at these narratives that weren't exactly true. And she was using her, her family and her children and her family to like invoke these like mythologies or like, which just revealed this kind of like internal world of the artist. You know, they weren't about like motherhood or whatever. Like they were, I mean, some kind of are, but um, you know, it was more about like just playing and like really having fun in the visual world. Um, yeah. And then another early inspiration of mine is Alessandra Sanguinetti. Um, I remember being introduced to this work in my early photographic education um, and this uh, series of hers on the sixth day always kind of stuck with me. Um, I was just really drawn to like the beautiful light in her photos and how she's capturing like, you know, these pictures of animals, which like at once describe the horrors and beauty of life, um, like really gritty, gory stuff um, that's captured really beautifully and punctuated by moments of like real tenderness. Um, and then when I got to SFAI, I was like less concerned with um, people and figures in my work. I felt like it just made it too complicated. And I was really interested in just like the play of light um, on the cityscape. And, you know, growing up in San Francisco really influenced the way that I see and like what I look at. Um, and I just like really am a sucker for that like beautiful light that falls across like the stucco buildings here. And um, I really fell in love with like high noon light for the first time after, um, you know, being really into like sunset kind of like glowy light for a long time. And so I wound up being um, quite influenced by Henry Wessel's work. Um, I just love the way that he captures this like swath of uh, black and white tones, um, just really like elegant um, and beautiful. Um, so I'm gonna start by showing you like early work so you can like get an idea of where I've come from and stuff. Um, so this is all work that I was making in high school. Um, and I was making a lot of self-portraits at this time, which allowed me to create this like alternate reality um, where I was, in, I was in complete control of my image, um, which, you know, just kind of like helped me as a teenager, like, you know, exist in the world um, to create my own kind of image of my world. Um, and, you know, I was like documenting my friends and, 
the people in my life and like just kind of things I found interesting. Um, and I feel, I feel like my love of photography really stems from like this, just like intense love to, or this intense desire to like feel love and to like experience love and um, to like, you know, feel special and to feel like, you know, my life itself was special and like all the mundanities of my um, everyday experience um, had meaning and like, I just wanted to record things to remember them always like trying to like remember this feeling um, so that I could always go back to it. Um, yeah. Um, and then when I left high school, I was like kind of aimless for a few years and I took like five years off between high school and college. And like, I honestly um, never really thought that I would go to college or graduate from college. I just thought that like cost was a barrier for me and like other reasons. Um, but I was still photographing like diligently in my um, personal life. And, um, you know, I just, I was like working odd jobs and just like hanging out with my best friend at the time. And like, we would just like run around the city and make pictures together. Um, and she became like a big focus of my work in that time period when I was like 19 and 20. Um, and I got really interested in this idea of like building an emotional narrative through like the sequencing of images and like focusing on a narrative that doesn't really have a resolution, like just kind of expressing feelings through like the aesthetic picture plane, but also at the same time, like, you know, intensely trying to like hold on to my life and like preserve these moments. Um, Cause I'm just like a really sentimental person, I guess. And um, I, yeah, I just think like life is really beautiful. Um, and then I was like dating this guy who was like a really serious film photographer. And um, like, it helped me grow a lot as an artist because we were both really serious about photography, but um, I feel it also kind of like stunted me in ways because uh, suddenly I felt like I wasn't good enough because I was like a digital photographer. Um, which is like an absolutely ridiculous inclination, but like it took me a long time to like get over that and like accept my medium because I felt like a lot of the time when people asked me like, or when they found out I was a photographer, they'd be like film or digital to like, as kind of like this test to like see how dedicated I was or something. And I just felt like by saying digital, like people didn't understand or like they didn't understand, you know, my, my dedication, I guess, which is, I don't know, kind of silly, but, but anyway, I broke up with this dude and, um, I like was kind of all over the place and I was like, I'm gonna put my digital camera down and like only shoot film for a few months and like really get serious about, you know, photography, I guess, even though I was already serious about it. Um, but it was like really unfulfilling for me in short. And it made me realize that like the thing I really love about photography or one of the things is like the manipulation aspect of digital um, and like, how it's about being able to record a scene and change how it looks like a million times over, depending on how I'm feeling or like what kind of feelings I wanna evoke um, to reflect, yeah, some kind of, uh, like, I guess just the mutability of, of digital is what I really like. And like, just something about this like lull of a computer screen that like has hypnotized me from a young age, I think um, that made me fall in love with like the editing process. So like, after only shooting film for a bit and being really unfulfilled this one day, I was just like, fuck it. I'm just going to go take my camera down to the lake and like by my house and photograph. And so I'm like standing at this lake, this huge lake and, um, you know, just like admiring the light. And then like suddenly something like bubbles up from below the surface right at my feet. And I look down and it's this, like these pigeon wings that were totally detached from the body that once was there. And there were like turtles like eating at it from below the surface. Um, and so like instinctively, I pointed my camera at it and started photographing it. And then it wasn't until um, later that night when I was editing the photos that I realized that like in this photo, they kind of resemble angel's wings. Um, and it was in that moment that like, my entire love and understanding of what I was doing as a photographer was like revived in me. And I felt like I finally understood how perfectly images can capture that like beautiful paradox of life. And like, that was the point for me. And like, I knew exactly what to do from then. Um, Anna, sorry, you have two minutes. 
Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, sorry. Damn it. Okay, well, I'm just gonna skip ahead then. Um, but anyway, I started making this work about the fish and um, like, yeah, it was work where like I was going back every day and taking these photos and um, it was just really fulfilling for me. And it kind of gave me like the confidence I needed in myself. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go to art school. So I went to art school and then I was making work like about my neighborhood, like about the outer Richmond, um, you know, like inspired by Henry Russell and stuff um, kind of subconsciously. And yeah, this was the first book I made. It's called Notes and it was just a zine. And um, then in 2020, I got quarantined in um, this small mountain town where my, where my mom had bought a house um, the previous summer. And so I made this work called Pusher, which is dedicated to the town basically that used to be called Pusher, um, just kind of observational stuff. And then, um, yeah, so my thesis is called Language of Longing. And it's like, I feel like it's kind of an ode to like my entire photographic, um, you know, journey thus far. Like I feel, I was really like stuck a little bit and I like, kind of, I freed up my relationship to my camera by like um, adapting older film lenses to my digital camera and slowing down my process and just kind of like reinvigorating my joy for photography and like, um, you know, just like my love of like seeing the world. And it was like something about that lens itself. Um, it's like this 50 millimeter super Takumar lens. Um, it just like renders the world so softly. And it reminded me so intensely of being a teenager and looking through a camera for the first time, like a film camera. And just like, there's something that happens when you're in like an intro, you know, darkroom class where like suddenly everything in your life becomes like, has so much potential to be like beautified and, um, you know, like really turned into something special. And so I really felt that way again. And, um, this was the work. So I'm going to read you like an excerpt from my um, artist statement while I take you through the individual images. Um, I'm interested in the spirit of a place and how that manifests through the visual world. Seeing a crow fly by never dulls because the form of their body is so foreign to my own and so photographically entrancing. The creatures that inhabit any place tell the story of its atmosphere, a feeling we could never personally know, yet one that reverberates outward anyway. I love to look into the eyes of animals and be reminded of my own carnal being, our simultaneous distance and proximity. I extend my hand to the light and the world vibrates back. Another eye floats between me and the world, a chasm through which I'm able to share this alternate impression. That's the joy of photography to me, transmutation. And to look is to long, to see the world and desire a connection. Photography at once enables that point of connection, yet expresses our distance from our subject. It's a paradox that keeps me bouncing back and forth between the physical world and my own interpretation of it, like an exercise of the heart, a language of longing. Um, this is my install view for my show. Um, I framed everything without glass so that you could really see like the textures of the photos. Um, and they're all printed on a Hanamiwo photo rag paper. Um, yeah, and this is my little studio. I rent this studio down the street from my house. Um, and I'm looking forward to just like not being in school and traveling and um, possibly grad school like in the future if I can um, find a way to swing it. I'm um, interested in RIT, kind of. Um, yeah, that's my contact info. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Um, I'm sorry that we had to speed you up. Um, uh, so um, let's see, the work is just, wow. Um, visually, I think it's stunning. I wish I had actually been able to go see um, all of your works in person. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> I, there's a couple of things. One, uh, you talking about um, manipulated photography just made me think about uh, this book, mm. um, Faking It, Manipulated Photography Before Photoshop. I think uh, it was actually one of the first shows I ever worked, I ever assisted on, um, I should say, at the Met. Um, but if you can, I would recommend you reading it, especially if you're interested in 
photographic manipulation just to think about the history of it. Yeah. Um, and let's see, two photographers that really come to mind when I look at this just beautiful body of work are um, Farah al Qasimi's work about animals. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, um, I can send you her name if you've never heard of her before or if you have. Um, and then Rinko Kauchi. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like there's something so gorgeous about the light in your pictures. Um, I especially love um, your hand in the sunlight. Thank you. Uh, and so I'm curious uh, if you could talk about your relationship with animals. Like there's a lot of animals in this, uh, in these pictures and I'm, I'd, yeah, I'd love to hear more. Yeah, I, um, I just like, well, I grew up like in apartments and um, so I could never have like a dog or a cat, um, but I kind of had like every other pet under the sun, like guinea pigs, hermit crabs, like all of it. Um, but I don't know, like my dad ha has a really, like he's like an animal person and um, I think I just like inherited it. Like I just like, really love animals and like especially when I was a teenager and I was like I don't know I was kind of like depressed and stuff and like I just like liked the company of animals like a lot more than people um and yeah I don't know I just I just I find like you know that their their lives are like so complex and like humans really discount like the experience of animals a lot and like the emotionality of animals a lot um and so I feel like um in this work, I'm just trying to kind of call attention to like the humanity of animals um, mm -hmm. and like their own like spirits and feelings and emotions. And like, I just kind of gravitate towards like the natural world. I'm just like fascinated by their lives, you know? I mean, I'm particularly drawn to your water pictures. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if it's because both like, you know, the the colors and those are really interesting, but um, but also because it's like it's something about visible and invisibility, seeing mm -hmm. like that there's a whole other world underneath yeah. the surface that um, that you're kind of you know you're giving us a peek at what's there. Um, yeah, yeah it, like especially compared to the other ones, I find the uh, the water ones really strong. And I don't know if anybody else was just wowed by that. Uh, pigeon wing picture that is not in your thesis I know but was in I think 2014 is that right uh 17 I think. 17 I mean that like I mean that deserves to be the cover of something um <laughs> thank you it's sorry there, no no don't worry there it is that and actually the bruised knees I was really wowed by um mm -hmm. um and I don't know yeah that picture um could you talk a little bit about that one? Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I just was, uh, like, I mean, it's it's a really, like, kind of mundane story. I feel the picture is, like, more evocative. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know. She just, like, fell down. And, yeah. Yeah, no, it, it, it grabs me. But I think, uh, I guess what's so interesting is seeing this body of work Mm -hmm. um uh, these past bodies of work and then your uh thesis in which like you focus more on animals and it's just it, it's mm -hmm. you definitely moved in a different direction um yeah. and but I like it um and I'm curious <laughs> excuse me like where the longing comes for you like what are you longing for when you look at this body of work yeah totally so like um kind of what I didn't have time to talk about was um like, I feel that photography itself is, like, a language of longing um, for me personally. Like, you know, like I say in my statement, it's, like, photography offers you a point of connection, but at the same time, it, like, puts a literal barrier in front of your face um, to the world. And so it's, like, it allows you to connect with the world and to, like, kind of hold the world in your hands, but it's always a replica of the world. Um and like that gives the heart some solace, you know, to like take a photo of a loved one and have it. But like, for me, photography creates this like eternal longing because um, I'll never quite be able to like touch what, or like, you know, touch what I'm looking at. Like I can photograph it and create something that is is new. It's like my interpretation of that scene, but like, 
um, I don't know. I just like have this like incessant desire to to keep photographing things, to keep compiling the archive. And I like I don't think it'll ever stop, you know, because I, because one, I think images are just like seductive. Like I think seeing something in like a 2D like textural picture is like a really seductive thing and I just want to like make more. Um, but like, it's just like longing to like touch the world, I guess, and like connect with it. I guess a similar question uh, to Jaden that I had is, were you thinking about this in terms of the installation of like physical pictures or were you thinking about this in a book format? I think uh, first and foremost, I was thinking it, thinking of it as an installation. Um, I was really focused on like the constellation of it um, because I had never, like I just kind of started making constellations this semester and this was like the first like complete one that I made. Um, I'm used to working in like a book format, like sequencing format. Um, so I definitely like want to adapt this to that, um, but I've really like fallen in love with it as a constellation. And I, it was actually hard to like put the images in single slides and like go through them because hmm. I was like, wait, no, no, no. Like it's so like, it just felt like a little different than like just seeing the whole thing, you know? And uh, if you go back to your actual install picture, mm -hmm. <laughs> me. yeah, I would wonder like, if you're, you know, ever install this again, if you could play more with the space, I'm sure you just have like a finite amount of wall space here, but mm -hmm. it would be fun to, to, to put more space between some of the cloud, like between mm -hmm. the constellation to also mm -hmm. um, represent the idea of longing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Sorry, I just like choked on my water before and now I can't stop coughing. <laughs> um, um, how are we on time? We have two minutes left. Okay, sorry, there, I'll stop coughing now. Um, and I'm wondering how, like, I love that the Castro um, Theater and the Goldfish, like, have share similar colors. Yeah. And I'm wondering what you were thinking, because the, the Castro Theater feels like, you know, different than some of the other pictures that you're showing me. Of course, it's like the built environment and, yeah. and that I see on the top uh, yeah. as well. But yeah, I'd love if you could talk a little bit about how yeah. you see it fit in. Um, it's actually the Balboa Theater um, in the Outer Richmond. Um, and all of this work like is made, like I'm really like, you know, I, I've like lived in the Outer Richmond for like 17 years. I moved here when I was like 11. And like, um, it's kind of just like, a, I chose to include that one because of the like um, formal qualities, like similarities to the fish. Um, but also it's like, just like the subtle, like, ode to like my neighborhood and like, where I'm at and almost all these all these photos except for the seal one are taken in the outer Richmond um yeah so it's just kind of like subtly about like you know where where I find myself and what I see and like um yeah and was there ever ever any more thought about putting more of yourself in like you, you know, have the I, hand yeah, yeah I really like um straight away from like having my face in my work um like I, I felt like when I was a teenager and I was doing self-portraits um like I really was doing that because I like it came from honestly like kind of a place of vanity and like wanting to feel like pretty and stuff because like I didn't feel that way when I was a teenager and like wanting to like be in control of my own image but I think after a while like um, you know, I think it's also part of the reason why I strayed away from having like people, other people in my work is that like, I feel like the human body and face just like uh, distracts a lot. Um, like I'm interested in kind of maybe reintroducing myself into my work and like seeing how it goes, um, like not specifically for this series, but I, I kind of enjoy the fact that I've like taken my facade out of it because this is who I am you know what I mean and that's really helpful because I just know that in 2012 or when you began photographing you really focused on the self-portrait so it's interesting to think that the self-portrait has actually moved away yeah and 
Sorry, that is time. Um, is there maybe uh, one last comment or we're good? I just want to say thank you. And I know that you were nervous, but you were cool as a cucumber and it was great. So thank you so much. Want to all right thank you anna thank you okay so next up i just sorry i have to re refer back to the list wei jin you are next Um, hi everyone. My name is Weijin Shi, and I've been studying CC photo program for four years. And today I'm going to review what I have made and showing a little bit of my growing trees to you. Um, I come from three different places in China: Chengdu, Dongguan, and Inner Mongolia. And those three places are located in a wide range. As you can see on the map, I put it on the corner. Um, for the interest, um, I think there's no differences between me and other teenagers. Um, maybe me just more be more nerdy and otaku, and taking photos is the only thing that I'm good at, or maybe no. Unfortunately, my work could um, convince myself. And for inspiration, I put two artists here. The first one is Hong Ke. Hong Ke is an artist based in Shanghai. I see her images as an unspoken language and dedicate nostalgia, which represent Chinese late 90s to Z generation. Those visual symbols are likely picked from the most sensitive part of my heart. She's trying to invite her audience to feel by using her soft and sensitive power. And those two images on the left were from her book published by Jia Jia Zhi. And Feng Li. Feng Li made his first and best work, White Night, in my hometown, Chengdu. Um, wild and bizarre, and the real time interval were key points to his image. I was inspired a lot from White Night, and I still remember the feeling when I first seen <clears throat> when I first seen those images. I feel like I was struck by a sounder. And let's move on to my work. Um, I made it various ammo when I was a freshman. Ruichi Sakamoto's music inspired the title Where's Ammo. The song is for the movie The Last Emperor. The main character, Pu Yi, is running and looking for his wet nurse, which was called Amo in Mandarin. In my work, Amo represents my roots. People in China have a sense of belonging to their roots. They're, they believe birth and death should be in the same place because family and memories are rooted there. I always believed that, but it gradually became my anxiety. My complex family structure confused my identity and the, and the sense of belonging. My family and me were experiencing and immersed in the huge economy developing background and the domestic immig immigration. The work is an explosion of myself and my generation Where's Amo and where's my root? Where's our root for the Z generation in China? And also I made a, like a, 
and installation work for the four wheels ammo. Um, I put my family portrait on the Ruby Ruby Cube. Um, I think this way like could like represent what uh, the theme and also the concept really well. And I made my second second project when I was uh, sophomore um, when I was in the second semester of my sophomore year. I talk about um, this the reservation of the photography is still valid in today's society. It is often said that an image is a frozen moment. Those frozen moments are often accompanied by the subjective emotions between the object and the photographer. And they are usually in dialogue with time span, memories, and emotion. Cecil is based on the old house where my grandma and I share the same memories by photographing the war at a certain point in time and printing the frozen moment back to the original war. We can conduct a dialogue across time, memories, and the emotion between grandma and me. And for my thesis work, American thesis, it was like a um, when your project, and it's also named APN. APN is um, is the literal translation of its English title, American Cat Pieces, and APN is pronounced and understand as form in Mandarin. The artist was inspired by by feeling overwhelmed, guilty, and Curiously, when he first knew the word in his childhood, and he got the same feeling when he first learned about the United States. The thing of APN is the search for conflicting cultural symbols and the automatically subconscious communication behind them. 2020 was when COVID-19 exploded on a global scale and its immediate consequence with international travel, diplomatic relationship, and economy structure more complex and challenging. Cultural symbols that would have represented the United States, like the Statue of Liberty, the Grand Canyon, and the Golden Gate Bridge are undergoing a collapse of different latitude. May was tries to cross to cultures use photography as an objective medium to capture the sim cultural symbols from his from my perspective and use identity to build a bridge named the communication between the two points. And those are select works from American cut pieces. And to make this work more um, complete, I collaborate with the graphics designer Harry Wu to make a newspaper form um, photo book. And I incorporate those cultural symbols from the image. Uh, I just I just show you guys on a sticker sheet like what I, what I have here. Um, I think sticker sheet and newspaper play um important role in this work and also in communication. They are the way to see others back to decades ago. And um, here's like a my installation work on. So much, so much. I choose the traditional framework and set stickers as an interaction way between work and the audience. It reflects the same communication, and we can see the result of 
and we can see the result of the communication in the shadow reflect on the print through a sticker. There's the new um, sub subtaku. And yeah, what's next? Um, hopefully I could find a job here and get ready to apply MFA at the end of the year. And I'm really excited about my next step, whether a new project or life. And trying to be a better kid. Yeah, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your work with all of us. Um, I just have to say, I think you have a really beautiful sense of light, especially with um, many of your interior shots. I was uh, just uh, really taken aback at how beautiful they were, um, uh, particularly when you began with the Where's Armo series. I really, uh, if you want to actually share your screen, and I think yeah. that would be fun to see some of those again. Um, and I, I also, uh, yeah. And then the next, the next slide is actually where I was very impressed. Um, and I'm wondering if you could talk just a little bit about these two pictures. I know I should probably be focusing on your thesis, but I'm kind of curious about this. Yes. Um, on the left, it's like, it's like um, my, my, my grandfather and my grandmother from my father's side. And I like, um, for, cause I, I, I don't live with them a lot. Um, so in, in 2020, I got a chance to, to go back to China and to, um, to spend more time with them and to find more um, family connection with them at a certain time. So, um, and, and, and the image on the right is like, it's like the, the, like the window with the, um, with the beautiful frame on, on their house. So, um, I, yeah, it was it's like, a, yeah, it, it's it was a beautiful like, pairing. Um, yeah, it was like, um, I, I, I really appreciate that time that, you know, like uh, I got a chance to spend more time to, to know, to know their, to know their, um, character more, more well and to understand my, my root more well. Yeah. And what a, and what an interesting, uh, way to frame your project. I just like the concept, where is Armo and thinking about roots and how, um, you know, in the cult and you have, you come from many cultures and, uh, and whereas this concept you were describing is all about um, being born and dying in the same place and, and having those roots set down. And so um, I really felt this, uh, like either it's longing or nostalgia or trying to figure out who you are and uh, when looking through this. Maybe we could uh, go now to your thesis project. And I just, you have to talk to me about the stickers. Just yeah. Talk, talk to me a little bit more about the stickers. Um, um, yeah, the sticker, like, um, I just copied from the, from the photo works I made. Like, like the I, swans and, there? Yeah. You, is that? Yeah, um, maybe I can talk a little bit about the, the target board because um, that's the most, um, the, that's the that's the best one. Like I, I think in here, because I, I still remember like why we doing a critique um, at Aspen's class. And like most people, like the most people could tell the, is the target board. But for me and maybe for for the audience in, in China or other place outside of the US, it's hard for, for them to tell is um is a target ball. It's more like a more like a red nose. So that's kind of like a cultural um 
like the cultural differences between like two different um, from, from two different cultural backgrounds. And that's kind of the way um, to come in, to achieve the, the concept like communication things. And uh, yeah. And I didn't even make the connection about the target ball. So yeah, the target stone ball thing that they right, that's outside of the stores. Um, thank you. Um, but even like all of these works in this series, I, I very like the light is beautiful, especially like the um, the chairs around the table. Um, and there's like, yes, that I think is fantastic. Um, and are you just finding these places and just uh, you find them and photograph them as is? Yeah. And because uh, I, yeah, I think your perspective and your composition is really interesting. And I love that you're not afraid to use flash or to photograph in dark spaces either. Yeah, like uh, I sometimes use flash to um to emphasize the the details or like the the symbol what did you do that in the is it in the swan picture or was it in the um the photograph where you have the carriage oh yeah there you have one up there too yeah yeah i i don't often see people who um who feel comfortable mixing nocturnal scenes or where you uh, include a flash and uh, natural light. And I really like that you're doing it. I think um, I think you've managed to do it very successfully. And I that's a crazy car seat if I've ever seen one. Um, so you obviously have an eye for the quirky uh, things that happen. Oh, and that picture with the um, with the boot the again the light i think uh you really have an eye for that i don't know but there's also something very child um you're interested in notions of childhood too it seems and maybe uh like by you have like a child's um go um rain boot right you have the car seats um, you also have stickers, which are often, you know, speak to uh, childhood and connotations of, um, I don't know, just youth. And so I'm curious if you think this work is also about youth or children, or is it really, uh, are they just more formal elements? Um, no, like, like, um, prefer um i think there's a ton of childish when i when i when i when i was making those images um because like for for me i i i love to make things more more funny and kind of challenging the, the way of people to see like um especially like that's just some picture that um i i hope they they could they could make make a make a dialogue between the audience and like what what they see and um what kind of the the, the symbol or, or kind of the thing um kind of triggers them to to see those those pictures yeah i that's the the way i i'm trying to make my work more like a childish or something yeah. Or it's it's not that the work is childish. Sorry if I miscommunicated that. It's just there's references to childhood um, in the pictures uh, because there's like a, a child's rain boot here or that um, the car seats, right, that children use. And yeah. why I find that interesting is because you're also talking about um, these cultural references that, you know, speak to um, kind of American culture and like, exchange and um and that also begins in childhood right these um but like this mini mouse um uh figure right that's something that um a child will recognize and you kind of inundate um cultural references to kids um but i yeah i think that this work is really interesting and i actually like that you're playing with the frame with the stickers 
I'm sure you uh, know the work of Sadie Barnett, um, uh, but I just, I think that's fun um, and playful. And I don't see it that often. Um, I mean, you, and is and I didn't see your show. Is this the only picture that you did that to, or did you uh, do it to the others? Um, yeah, that's the only pictures. But uh, I also said like the the newspaper form um, photo book that include all of my images. Yeah. Um, and it reminds me. Um, I have children and um, also that like, I love that you put the stickers everywhere, right? It wasn't just like, so like one little place on the, um, on the photograph, on the frame. I love that like, it's just an all over um, interaction with it. Um, yeah, I think the, this the is actor, really interesting. Yeah, the actor was not, 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 um, not me, like made all of the stickers. Like, uh, I I kind of invite the the audience to put the stickers on the frame. Oh, I didn't understand that. Yeah. That's okay. So you invited um, visitors to engage with your work. Yeah. And do you have you done that before? Yeah, um, I did bunch on the on a bumper. Like I I just made like ten or yeah. I think that's and... a really interesting thing to push. Yeah, thank you. With interactions with the actual object. Um, how are we on time? Just so. We are at time. So perhaps, we time. yeah, last okay. minute. Yeah. Um, this, I, I've loved seeing all of your different projects um, and your sense of light is just fantastic. And, um, and I love that you're playing with flash, with stickers, with all of these, um, with all of these different strategies. Um, I think it's really interesting work and I'm glad that I learned about it today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Wei Jin. All right. Hey, uh, hello everyone. Um, let me share my screen. Can you guys see that? Okay. Uh, no. You can't see it? No, no, cannot. Let me. Oh, Androgyny, maybe you should have done it during check tech, huh? <laughs> tech check. <laughs> no, where did it go? Oh my gosh, now I'm going to have anxiety. Hold on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Okay, now it should work. Okay. Um, uh, not not yet. There you uh, go. Now? Okay, we're good. We're good. So do you guys? Hold on. If I go from here, you guys could see that, right? It's moving and everything? Yes. Yes, okay. we're good. Okay. So hello, everyone. My name is Androgyny King. Um, I am getting my degree in photography with a minor in writing and literature. Um, so, uh, oh my gosh. So a little bit about me, I use they, them pronouns. I grew up in South Central California. This is a photo of me when I did my uh, marathon. I recommend everyone to do a marathon at least once in their life, just once. <laughs> um, but yeah, so talking about more. So one of my biggest inspirations is Paul Sepoya. I have a great respect for their craft and attention to detail in the work they do. I remember seeing Paul's work for the first time when I entered at the J. Paul Getty Museum as a student gallery guide. I was drawn to his usage of collage and his darkroom mirror study as the overall concept in my eyes was that this, this desire of showcasing his sexual desires and as well as his and others' identities. I think specifically for me, feeling represented in his work. Growing up, I lived in a very conservative community, which persuaded my views on what is right and wrong when it comes to self-expression. As I continue to grow, I had to continuously unlearn bad habits that hindered my ability to see myself for who I am and not hide myself or feel ashamed to be me. So I think Paul, for me, has been that inspiration to really uplift myself. Um, so. 
back in middle school, I was severely bullied, which caused me to self-isolate and have few friends. Although I was very energetic and social, there was still a part of me that felt I wasn't truly being me. So I turned to photography and found that I felt more liberated and free, using the camera as a weapon against the bullies and proving to others that I will not allow self-hate to or, or negative comments to get the best of me. In my senior year of high school, I got the opportunity to participate in a program at the J. Paul Getty Museum, where I focus on a project that focused on queer folks and how the importance of being you is far greater than allowing bullies or hate speech to overcome your dreams and desires to be you. There is a video of me available at the, that the J. Paul Getty released, and I would be willing to share that in the group chat if others are interested. I do want to note that my dead name is used in the video, but however, I would like to share it if others are interested. So looking at the left of the blue photo, uh, it's just a color study that we did in the program. The middle photograph and the right photograph are um, actual images that were exhibited at the J. Paul Getty Museum. So the Find Me series is based on a project where I'm trying to simply find me. During the pandemic, like many of us, we were stuck at home, forced to slow down, and at times reflect. Some may have hated the experience, others loved it. For me, I used the pandemic to ask myself an existential question that I still ask myself to this day, which is who am I? During the pandemic, I was able to legally change my name, which was such a surreal moment for me. With each picture representing a form of my new self, Run is myself eluding from the past and about entering into a new era of life that I will get to live with my new identity. Connect is about the people I will encounter embracing my new identity without any fear. Believe is what I need to do as I continue my journey into the unknown. Stance is no fear in sight, just strength and confidence with those who support me. Free is understanding that it's okay to not, o not always have a plan that living in the moment with friends is good enough. And so these are the four images. I am missing one, but hopefully you could get a good sense by looking at that. And the Ya No Tengo Miedo series is a very emotional project for me due to the fact that I'm really diving deep while trying to intertwine my cultural identity as well as my queer identity. Ya No Tengo Miedo is a conversation with myself in trying to understand where I come from and what it means to me to be a queer Latina. I have always felt so disconnected with my Latin heritage and believed that I did a disservice to myself to not know or want to know more about my roots. There was this feeling that I would be ridiculed for learning so late. This stress holds symbolic meaning as it tackles the tension between the feminine and masculine traits and who should be wearing it. Ya no tengo miedo is more than just a learning point for me. More so, it is about the many people who are or were in my position of feeling afraid to be considered a failure, a burden, or worthless. This body of work is me rising towards the fear of feeling such a burden to myself and where I come from. The sunflowers also hold symbolic meaning as I always saw the sunflowers as uplifting, hopeful, and vivacious. Let these sunflowers be a sense of reminder that we are all beautiful and shine in our own ways. And even through all the pain and sorrow, there is still hope. Prior to my final thesis, I wanted to challenge myself in combining cultural and queer identity, along with relearning how to navigate friendships post-pandemic. A moment speaks about the ideas of friendships and what that looks like for me, what it can look like for you as well. It's sharing tender moments with friends, but also those emotional connections to remind us that we are not alone. In times like these, it's okay to ask for help. And now searching for a title is exactly what it means. Talking about family is hard. Talking about this journey of where I am now to when I first moved to the Bay Area is challenging. I am searching for the who am I? I have been challenging myself to think beyond the construct of what makes a family a family to why I'm so scared to be me. I am in search of something potentially lost at times from looking at two family dynamics in which one where I feel so liberated to be me and one where I feel so tense to be myself. The challenge and the triumph, torn between two worlds, scared to show the real me. This body of work is arduous in the sense that I still don't feel complete, searching for the wants rather than the needs. 
and this is the BFA thesis show, Searching for a Title. Um, in regards to my BFA show, I wanted to replicate walking into a traditional Latin household. I wanted to create something that I saw in my friend's home rather than in my own home. When I walked into my friend's homes, I would see this beautiful arrangement of family photos also in different frames, placed in different parts of the house, yet it still felt like it all went together. When I was growing up, I never really was able to see family portraits in my household. There was no family portraits on the wall. There was nothing being seen. So when I entered my friend's home, in a way I felt jealous, in a way I felt sad. Why don't I have these things that others have? And yeah, hopefully that you're able to see this journey of where I first started to where I am now. Um, so proud of myself. <laughs> And then, yeah, so my Instagram is Introgeny. This is my website. And I kind of want to leave everyone here with a quote, one of the quotes that I really hold dear to my heart. Art should comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfortable. That's my presentation. Thank you, Androgyny. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm glad that your uh, slides worked. Um, can we go back to that? Um, to your installation. Oh, installation. I just want to say, I think this is fantastic. Um, I love that you were thinking about um, uh, almost like a Latinx household or thinking about like how people present their pictures and their family and what you hope for. It's like what you're kind of moving toward. And um, have you seen the Luis Carlos Bernal gallery um, at Estef Moma? No, I have not. Um, try to come in the next two weeks before it comes down, um, if you can, or I can send you uh, just some pictures by the artists um, uh, because in his photographs of people's homes in the late seventies in Tucson, um, he photographs a lot of uh, uh, walls like this in which people are kind of representing their families. And I just, I, I think you would find it interesting. Um, I also am just curious, those top two pictures, are those from your family? Are those found or those? Are you talking about the um, painted one? The painted one and the one next yeah. to it? Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's an archived painting of my great grandparents from my mother's side. Um, I know their names, but I forgot their names. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, I think this painting. I don't really know the time of the painting frame, but they seem to be young. So I'm thinking maybe the 40s to 70s, but I'm not really sure. And I can't really like- No worries. Figure that out. Um, but it I is love that you included it. Or backboard or something like that. I, I love that you included it. I think that's really important because you're kind of creating the, the family wall that you kind of want. Um, and you is that your- uh, mother that you're um, in the in the center yes or so that is my mother um, um I, I I love that that's the photograph that you enlarged and um and talk to me about uh the red the red color that you decided to adorn yeah. that you that of course plays out in other pictures well something about I wanted to make sure I stood out um mm -hmm. in a different way and I know in traditional Latin culture, like we're very vibrant in colors. And I know for me, I don't know, I've always liked the color red. I love the color yellow. And I wanted to make sure I stood out. My mother is wearing a pink dress and that just happened by accident. She just naturally owned a pink dress. And when I first saw that she was wearing that, um, I was like, well, let's do it. Let's take this photo together. Me and this red dress, being this pink dress. I think it works so well. Um, but really this red dress for me, um, I'm kind of in a way, I'm, I picked it because I wanted to still showcase that I'm tackling these issues, that I am the center of the attention and I'm going to make sure that my voice is heard, that I'm going to make sure that I'm seen. Um, and I feel like red really draws attention to the viewer, um, at least for me. And so that's kind of one of the reasons why I chose red. I think it's perfect. I, I wouldn't change a thing. I just, I, about that, I just think it, it's really nice to hear you talk through um, why you chose um, a, a certain color dress that you see throughout a couple of the works. Mm -hmm. Let's go um, toward, uh, yes. Yes, that's actually interesting. Um, 
talk to me about this, about the, um, I'm guessing you staged how everyone was standing in that picture in the, um, in the center and then how everyone stands apart. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I called um, the eight by 10, Era yo el patito feo, which is, am I the ugly duckling? Um, because I've always felt like I was the black sheep of the family. Um, I felt like I was disconnected um, within my own family. But I think by taking these photographs and also wanting to state that we've never taken a family photograph together. Um, and by doing so, by doing these photographs, I, I mean, I could have included different photographs where I had my actual family with me and brought together, but I think I chose, um, or I was thinking about it within these two photographs because it really does kind of show our family dynamic in our household. It really does show like how we are, like I think searching for a title, um, us all distance from each other is kind of what it is. Like we'll check in every now and then with each other, but it's not something that we're so bonded with. Um, and I feel like that needs to be translated. And, you know, when we talk about family dynamics, it's like every family dynamic is different from the next, right? And it's like, well, how do we showcase that and show the case the authenticity of it, even though while it is being staged? You know, something that I, um, that a lot has been talked in my work is that I'm very, um, oh, I can't remember the word right now, but um, my work is very, it's very similar to the work that you staged, um, but and at first I felt like that was a negative thing. I felt like mm -hmm. looking at that wasn't always a good thing, but I reclaimed that by saying, no, this is a narrative, a story that I'm trying to tell. And it may not be all butterflies or sunflowers, but it's the reality of the world that some, some of us live in. And I wanna be able to showcase that even the flaws in, within, our, within my own family, um, but those are also our greatest strengths too, in my opinion. And and stage for me is does not have negative connotations just so you know um that's actually one of my secret loves of photography is staged and kind of performed photographs but that's just another story aside um uh what it makes me think about is how that felt to actually talk to your family members about why you would want a photograph in which you're a part and which you're then in a like you know i, I think that must have been quite an interesting experience to have to articulate those feelings or maybe it wasn't I don't but I'd love to hear you talk about that I also just want to like say too like I want to give a special thanks to um both um Nelson Chan but also Aspen Mays for really pushing me to take that photograph with my mother um I really feel like there was this sense of closure um not fully but it was a step in the right direction and I feel like that's really translated in this it's really being translated well and um although I still feel like the this project particularly is not complete um I know where I can potentially now go with this project and I know um looking at it now that what I can now work on for my next steps when it comes to completing this project or the continuation of this project um I'm really excited that you're going to continue this project thank you I think it, um, yeah, I actually could imagine a whole wall um, of these works. And of course, with like different kind of frames for each of the the pictures, right? Because like, it's like at different times, you want to present them differently. And, um, and would you be in every single picture? So when I look at um, kind of my old work, um, but really, uh, let me take a step back. I think when I looked at some of my images, um, when, when I looked at some of my family photos, there was no really photos of me as a baby. And I kind of questioned why there was no photos of me as a baby. Um, out of like 200 photos that I saw in a photo book when I was like 10 years old, only probably five had me in there. And I remember I did ask my mom some questions about it, but there wasn't a clear answer, but also I was probably young at that time. Maybe there are more, but I, the book that I saw only had five of me, but it was never me by myself. It was always me with a sibling or me with someone else. And so why that is so important to say is that 
now I feel like I, I want to be part of the photographs. I want to now step into the realm of being in front of the camera, not just behind it. And I think that versatility of being able to be behind it, but also being able to be in front of it is really what's going to help me create work that is powerful for myself. Um, but also work that potentially may um, lead to something else and maybe open some new doors for me. I, I think that's wonderful and it makes me excited to see where this project goes. Um, I would also urge you to try, um, I know you're doing it with family members, but also I'm curious what just a single self-portrait would look like in this mix um, of, of just you, just as, a, as one of the many um, parts of the installation. Yeah, I think that's been a conversation that has come up um, with within, within my professors. Um, definitely looking at kind of the Yano Tengo Miedo series, yeah. the Find Me series. Um, you know, this is the first dress that I ever worn. Um, well, not the first dress, but the first dress that um, I felt kind of proud in and kind of reclaiming my identity. Um, I wanted to do the same thing with this red dress and I haven't had the opportunity to do it with it yet. Um, but I kind of want to challenge myself to go beyond the studio setting and take these photographs outside of the studio. Um, however, that is very challenging for me um, because of the way how I grew up, because of the way how um, societal norms are. Um, it challenges me to look at it differently, but also like it gives me the courage that I need to take that step and to to make that step, right? And really just take those photographs outside, which I should do, <laughs> I'm afraid to do. I, I feel lucky to have seen your work and, and everyone's work uh, today, but I, I think uh, I'm excited how your installation speaks to um, both kind of, it, it references like a particular culture and your culture. And it also, um, I think really does justice um, to the work. So. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I want to go back and go photograph myself with my, all my, some of the high school people that I know, all of their parents. I remember I used to be friends with so many individuals that um, their parents were just so welcoming to my home, welcoming into their homes. And again, looking at their house, looking at their photographs kind of gave me that sense of like jealousy, that sense of like, oh, I don't I have these things. And so I want to go back and take photographs with them, take myself. Okay. And I think it'd be a great start. I think this was a great start for me um, to something extraordinary. Congratulations. Yes, we're going to have to leave it there. Androgyny, thank you so much. But also, maybe you can at some point share with Shana that one self portrait that's actually on the wall in that show. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, are, you are doing it you know and and it's fantastic so maybe that can be um another conversation between the two of you, you. Um, okay so last up is jimmy hello let me share my screen Um, okay, cool. Can you see this? Cool. Yeah, great. Hey guys, um, thanks for staying. Uh, so my name is J. Jimmy Flora Gaviola, and I'm a graduating student at the photography program. Um, so I currently reside in San Francisco to attend CCA, but I've lived in the Bay Area for about five years now. Growing up, my dad was an active member of the U.S. Air Force. Um, being a military dependent, I moved every three to four years. This shaped the way I view and engage with the world with an open heart and open mind. Being raised by two creative immigrant parents, I saw firsthand how resourceful and how ambitious my parents were in navigating their lives and providing for their children, oftentimes withholding their own personal dreams and endeavors. I think this plays a major role in my work ethic, pursuing an art career and attending CCA in the first place. As a kid, creating felt like second nature. Taking pictures with my parents' 35 millimeter camera, it allowed me to preserve memories of candid moments and help remember my friends in scrapbooks. Um, it was life-saving. Journaling, writing poems, and taking pictures was my coping mechanism 
with having to move often. As I got older, I gravitated towards poetry and the camera as my main mediums because of the way the image or photo can communicate emotion or ideas without using much words. And I was drawn to poetry because of the rhythm and freedom I felt in the syntax of creating imagery. I feel like these mediums allowed me to allowed me the tools to envision, express, and manifest my creative thoughts and ideas. Um, and so a few no notable places where I've lived so far uh, has been Japan, Vegas, um, Nevada, Delaware, Massachusetts, Oklahoma, um, and then back to the Bay. And so many influences, inspirations um, come far and wide, but uh, from all those different sources, I think it's rooted from my personal experiences in some way. Um, and starting off with Ren Hang, during the Tumblr era, <clears throat> I stumbled upon the late Chinese photographer Ren Hang. His intimate relationship with a point and shoot camera, his friends and organic props really opened my eyes to a surreal and poetic way of creating images using flash and curious compositions. It was emotionally moving for me. Um, and then moving on to Sudu Kita, uh, at my time at CCA, taking the art history courses related to contemporary art and modern photography, I learned about Sidhu Kita, um, Malian photographer known for his portraits of people and families um, that he took in his portrait photography studio in the 1950s. Um, his incorporation of cultural fabrics and patterns were hypnotic to me. Kita always allowed his sitters to have agency in what they wore and how they pose and what objects to have as props. Um, without losing a sense of their cultural identity. He also did these cool things with like American technology, like radio, having them hold radios or like motorcycles in the scenes. Um, and also another influence is Louis Baltz. He's an American visual artist and photographer. Um, he was an important figure in the new topographics in the late 1970s. Um, his work was monochromatic photography, usually of suburban landscapes and industrial parks, which highlighted his commentary of the void in the American dream. Uh, for me, I find myself coming back to his work. I think it's because of the way his landscape images um, is kind of like this combination of natural and man-made structures. Um, to me, it feels slightly empty and slightly incomplete at times. Um, and I just feel drawn to his work. Um, another photographer artist is Gabriella Iturbide. Her work um, as a photographer is same thing, like just tantalizing. Um, her images are remarkable, but I like to note her process in taking photos. I think that's what I cling to the most. Um, she's quoted to say, I adore the ritual of photography to go out with the camera to observe the most mythological aspects of people and then go into the darkness to develop the most symbolic images. For me, I think I draw upon a similar methodology in image making. And then in the top left um, is Bin Don. So this semester I was heavily inspired by Din Bin Don. Uh, thanks Aspen for showing me her chlorophyll or his chlorophyll print works. Um, but this Vietnamese American photographer was intriguing because of the way he used the leaf as kind of um, the material to print the images on. Um, and pretty much using his same process to uh, do prints for my thesis show. Um, the process is using the sun to create images, leaving the leaves, this embarkment of the image using digital and positive images. Um, and also other notable influences for me in my work is through music and film. Um, and also notable figures like Jose Rizal, Martin Luther King Jr., Virgil Abloh, and the community of contemporary artists who are shaping the world as they see it. I appreciate these people not only for their contributions to the world, but for their abilities to navigate multiple spaces and create positive changes in a larger social context. Um, so for the majority of my time at CCA, it's been an exploration of my relationship with the photographic medium as a poet, um, ranging from street photography, portraiture, abstract imagery, photo collages and archive scans. I feel like most of what I was creating in a sense, is a response to the white canon art history. Um, not seeing multiplicities of representation of the Filipino person, um, but it also made me think not just with Filipino people, but with underrepresented people. Um, growing in the photo program, I became more interested in uh, the personal process 
or my personal process in image making and telling personal and collective narratives. Um, and so I'm going to go back and show some of my previous works uh, with CCA. This is a series called Hindi Nakikita, which is um, Tagalog for invisible. This was in Nelson's Tools 2 course for color photography. Um, I was exploring the color yellow, but also responding to the AAPI hate crimes at the time. Um, obviously, this was all done via Zoom. So a lot of it was like self portraiture, kind of just me in my bedroom using um, household items and found objects at my home. Um, from that same series, it's Madonna at Pina. It's basically me holding this pineapple um, and kind of interjecting myself in art history in reference to Leonardo da Vinci's Madonna Lita. Um, I think this, having only been in the program transferring in for two years, I think this was kind of the pinnacle of me questioning my place in kind of the white canon in art history. And I think that kind of trails all the way to my senior thesis. Um, and further on within uh, the photo program, I began to just explore colors. So from yellow, I started to explore greens um, and still exploring not just ethnic identity, but my own identity and relationship to my friends um, through image making. So some of this is just like um, images in a grid format of some friends, family, um, and symbolic imagery that note to like light, to spirituality. Um, and I think still kind of exploring and figuring out my way in image making. Um, again, this is for a photo collage. Um, I was also taking an Afrofuturism course, which I think lended to some of uh, the imagery that I'm using in this photo collage. Um, but here is when I started to look back at archives, um, taking a note on uh, people of color and kind of putting a spin on um, what it looks like if the future is in the past or this sense of um, ancestral future. Um, this image, uh, so not only am I thinking about my own ethnic identity, but also kind of personal um, moments in my life. This is me with a partner at a time um, and also a poem um, to the left. Um, I think with photography, I didn't want to be, I was so concerned at the beginning to not be pigeonholed, to be just like, oh, you're only creating Filipino artwork or you're just, creating dialogue or images for this certain um, kind of concept or theme. So this, I have more of these images as well, but just to share that I'm creating images too that are more personal and to be meant to be, not to be shared. Um, and so as I was exploring um, ethnic identity with community, um, this is me just taking photos with friends, kind of um, prompting the question of what does joy look like in your journey as a person of color? And so with this series, I've questioned several friends and had them sit for me and kind of incorporate um, symbols like nature or fabrics or different um, textural details that were important to them, but also culturally, culturally relevant to their ethnic backgrounds. Um, and as I'm shooting black and white film, I'm also uh, navigating Oakland, as well as making that move to San Francisco in August. And so I had a just a series of black and white street photos. Um, I partic particularly liked this one because of the surveillance camera and the American flag, um, kind of hinting that I feel like, in a sense, as a person of color, constantly being watched or being seen, um, not in a negative way, but just because um, I may be like the only one in certain contexts or situations. 
Um, <clears throat> and so this is leading into kind of newer work that I created last this November, December. This one is from a series called Hagkakatanda, as I recollect the past. And this is a triple exposure. Um, and I'm channeling the psyche of an older version of myself from the year 2044. So when I'm able to reflect on the struggles and triumphs of my family's immigration from a future ancestral technology that reactualizes and brings to life memories. So it's like a triple exposure and then I scanned it. Um, so I'm really just like playing with the idea of what these images that I'm creating now represent in a future timeline or like in a future sense of other people reflecting on um, yeah, my experiences, which kind of trails into my BFA thesis project called An American Dream. And in Tagalog, it translates to Paniginit Nang America. Um, but pretty much going from this body of work, I was thinking about the future self, um, kind of reminiscing and making sense of the current present. And then with this project, I'm channeling like a younger child version of myself as if this is their dream. Um, so working with family archive and abstract imagery, the series trails across different points of time and a reflection of my family's experiences before and after immigrating to America from my motherland of the Philippines. Um, in the context that this series is a dream from the child version of myself. Um, I'm using, I'm questioning the echoes of immigration, um, capturing fragmented memories through glitches, drag scans, constructed dreamscapes, scenes, and layered images. Vibrant reds are a metaphor for compassion while nature becomes a conduit for home. And some questions I'm asking during, in this series of um, creation and the making of it is, in what ways can we honor our family's roots and stand firm in who we are in the evolving and ever-changing cultural landscape of the United States of America? And how does an immigrant preserve their cultural ethnic identities when the memories of their motherland degrade over time, especially as like further um, generations happen, um, they tend to lose like sentiments and memories and just like cultural uh, habits that then become Americanized or just pretty much Westernized. Um, and a, what sparked this series was since I moved to San Francisco, I've kind of just been walking around, going to places, and I finally took a stroll down Yerba Buena Gardens and um, right across SF MoMA. And so there was this Martin Luther King Jr. Silver Wall Memorial um, that caught my attention because it was translated in Tagalog. And so this is kind of the premise of the American Dream series. And so the quote is, these are revolutionary times all over the globe, men are revolting against old systems of exploitation and oppression. And out of the wombs of a frail world, new systems of justice and equality are being born. The shirtless and barefoot people of the land are raising up as never before. Um, and this just caught my attention uh, just because I wasn't expecting to walk and get inspired. Um, but the mere fact that, oh, it's meant to be read in this language that I'm still relearning to speak. Um, and so the one of the pieces that I worked on is this deconstruction of the American flag. It's 24 Instax instant film photos, which I dragged and scanned on a flatbed to kind of mimic the shape of a flag um, floating in the air. Um, and then within this flag, there's images that are more personal, like my brother hiking here, uh, my friend DJing here. Um, but there's also hints to honoring like the indigenous lands that we're on. Um, in this photo here, um, I took at an indigenous market in Daly City with the, I think, Ilamu tribe here. Um, and also hints to um, photography history. There's like this photo of Frank Roberts or Robert Franks as Americans and kind of just taking note that uh, me as a Filipino getting educated on history of photography, it's like, where do I fit into the landscape? And I think the deconstruction is more of showcasing multiplicity of what uh, America means and how we're constantly shaping it. And it's like malleable for us to determine what does it mean to be American. 
Um, and so within this series too, like I said, it's um, not just a story of mine, but it's also a story of my family, my mom, um, her journey. And so I'm creating this kind of constructed collage using bed sheets, using projector screens, different lightings, um, just to hint on like a dreamscape illusion of the future. Um, and I'm starting to, or I started to scan images because I acquired all of my family's fam like archives in September. It was like four family albums, four boxes. And so this was my process of um, kind of taking note how many images I've scanned during a session. Jimmy, you got two minutes left. Okay. Uh, so a portrait of me and my mom and my dad, just like a pinnacle moment of the images in the back when my parents, um, when my dad joined the Air Force and went to boot camp, um, just because I felt like that was such a huge life-changing moment. Um, this is a image of my brother and the son. We went hiking. Um, I just was really captured by this image of my brother, but also the quote that Martin Luther King Jr. Um, that I shared earlier. Um, and again, I think for me, the image making part, I'm interested in process and kind of creating images through like scanning, through collaging, um, through these scans. And so this brother here is the same as this guy here. Um, and so this story to me is more about um, the before and afters of immigration and like what does that actually look like and how does these hints of um, personalities kind of stay true to who they are even after those processes happen. Um, and so I'm like experimenting just with like different ways to create images through printing on Van Dyke process, um, doing double exposures um, and now like printing on leaves this is an image of me and my brother. Uh, we're doing like the Pledge of Allegiance for some reason. And I'm printing on this Ligularia leaf. It's pretty huge. Um, and then I do like a copper sulfate fix that kind of creates like this waxy tone um, to help preserve it, but also stop it from continuing the chlorophyll process. Um, and not just images, I'm using like digital positives on um, kind of patterns and prints. This is a binacle, which is a traditional Ilocano print to ward off evil spirits and confuse them. Um, but I think I'm still like experimenting to see the best ways um, to create an image on a leaf, like what leaves to use and kind of in the end, figure out a way to print on banana leaves. Um, and so this is my installation at the group exhibition at SOMARTS. Um, I've included an altar at the bottom. Um, in Tagalog, they're called like a tang. It's kind of just like ways to um, honor, kind of in reverence to genuflex on the work and the people that are in it. And so, What's next for me? Um, continue image making, family archives, continuing to scan them and hopefully turn that into a book in some way to live life, to continue to travel, work and collaborate with community, um, develop my art practice in all process. And right now I'm thinking about grad school, but kind of putting that in the distance for now. But yeah, thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you uh, for sharing that work. Maybe um, you could go back to the install shot. Um, I just, I want to say I love how you're um, thinking about different uh, processes. I find that really interesting. And, um, and I especially find uh, your use of the scanner uh, just fascinating. I, I was wondering if you could talk about a bit about using the scanner and why you do that sometimes. Um, so with the scanning, it originally started off with me scanning family archives because um, I did receive like a huge amount of them. Um, and so it was just scanning them individually. And then 
um, this was the first image or so I, I would scan a, a whole session. So this is like three, four hours of just scanning. I would just lay all the images on the flatbed and scan them. Um, but for this particular session, it glitched and it kind mm -hmm. of, um, I just took it that as like, oh, lean, lean into that. And so uh, this was kind of the starting off point to then creating this scan. Um, right. And yeah, I think for me, it's within the photo program, I'm learning like analog practices, processes, but also digital. And I think I want to honor both and in a way kind of play up and mix the analog and digital ways of going about it photos. And I, I love that you're talking about leaning into the glitch part, because I think that that it's just a, it, it's really nice. It both speaks to um, to uh, the technology and, and, and that you're using that kind of technology, but it also speaks to temporality and that you can stretch time, right? That time mm -hmm. doesn't have to be this linear uh, understanding. It can you can do different things. Um, and uh, it makes me think about Oh gosh, am I hearing myself? Oh, that's on. Hold on, I can like hear myself at the same time. Um, it makes me think about a couple artists that I'd love for you to look into if you don't already know them. Uh, Basira Khan uh, uses the scanner a lot um, in some interesting collages. Um, also, Sarah Swinner, her work, I just, especially with the glitch and leaning in, um, it makes me think about that. And then uh, there's one other person. I guess Keija Lucas um, had their work up at, um, at SF Camera Work. And so, yeah, I just, I would, yeah, advise you to just look at, look more at that scanner and especially that picture that isn't in your thesis project, but the one in which your hand is on the scanner with the, with the photograph on it. I mm -hmm. think that there's something about that. And I, I, I know Wendy Redstar has also done stuff where, she, where she's taken, and Stephanie Zahuko, they both, um, kind of are holding things in their hand and photographing them, things that mean something to either their culture or um, their personal background. Or, and I, I really like seeing your hand there in that picture. And I would try to do, think about how you could um, do more with that. Um, and then, sorry, I had like a whole list of things. Oh, so you showed a work in which, uh, there was poetry, and I know you said that it was not to be shared work, right? Uh, where the poetry was on the left, yes. Because um, in the beginning of your talk, you also spoke about being inspired by poetry. Um, and I'm so curious if you, in the future, hope to incorporate more of your own text and your own beautiful words in your work, whether it's in titles or, I'm just trying to think through uh, because I, I like what this does. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, I would say I, that was like a challenge throughout the whole time at CCA was the conversations of like incorporating words and text. I feel like I'm at a stage now where I like to see them separate. Um, but I feel like with the collaging, it kind of makes sense to lean into combining words and images, but I would like to do it kind of in a creative or like in a way that would surprise me instead of just like word and image. Or maybe it's like playing in the scanner with like text that you write yourself and like you collage it. And I don't know, I'm just trying to think of other ways for you to do it, but. Um, can you hear me still? Yes. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, I would just, I, I think there's something to your poetry and I would, urge you to try to incorporate it somehow in your future work. Um, hold on, let me just try this again. And will you go back to your, some of your work that's in your thesis? That's so great. <laughs> this. And you're almost dealing with performance. Is this, uh, is that like, is this a picture of like, is the artwork um, to, supposed to be me seeing that projected or is it a picture of um, of that? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, so this is 
pretty much constructed in a studio. Um, I wanted it to be like we're an image of this projected bed sheet loading mm -hmm. where you could see the cords. Um, but I have been kind of told to see it more of like installation to like recreate it where this can be the space it exists. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, okay, so that's really helpful. Um, this would be a really interesting installation. If that's how you would consider uh, showing it, I would suggest that you do that, uh, or at least try. Um, I think projection can be really uh, interesting, especially because you can walk through these images. And I think when you're dealing with personal history and family archive, that's something you could really play up to uh, and play with. Um, and let's go to your black and white pictures. That I mean, you have a really beautiful um, sense of of tonality. Like you, you have you the way you you print your black and white pictures, or is just fantastic. This one, and then you have the the two where I can see the the inspiration of Lewis Baltz um, in the work. You know which ones I'm talking about, I believe. Yes, there's. I mean, that one especially is just fantastic on the um, on the left. Um, but I just think you really are uh, skilled in printing. Um, and I really appreciate that, the way you, the light, and um, there's no dark shadows where I can't see any details. It's just, it's exquisite. And I wish I could actually see this in person. Um, and then I'm wondering if you could move forward uh, to the stack of archived images. That, yes. um, that one. Um, I, I'd love that you, you play a lot with wave formations in some ways, right? Like with the, um, the flag, there was, you know, this beautiful uh, curvature in it. And then in the other archival stack, there was a, 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 that the glitch that made this beautiful wave. And um, I just, I was wondering if you could talk about like, you got these images from your family, from your parents, or are they from a larger group of family? Um, these were pretty much from my oldest brother. Um, since mm -hmm. my family moved around a lot because of the military, um, when my older brother kind of settled in um, LA area, he just got everyone, like all the boxes, all the photo albums. Um, and then just in September, we connected to ex make exchange of all the items because I told him I wanted to scan them all. Um, but I didn't realize how much or how many there were. And so, yeah, the scan of the multiple images first started off as just like process of how many I would scan in a session. Um, but now I think I'm using that as a way to kind of conceal memories, but also kind of like display this idea of it also being private, but sharing what I want to share. I mean, it'd be interesting to also see where you go with this and um, and how you can make visible a couple, you know, in the stack, right? Because of course you have this beautiful um, aged look, the magenta um, tones that come out through um, those chromogenic prints that of course are unstable and are shifting. Um, but I'd love it to also see you pull out a couple of moments for me to, uh, for the viewer to see in these stacks. Sometimes I think that might be really interesting. And, and I am curious why you chose the flowers to represent um, the image that I see, or like, you know, to, to as a standout image. Yes, um, so these photos are actually taken from my mom. Um, there's just been this like thing where I've noticed that a lot of the images that my mom took, she's like naturally a photographer, but mm -hmm. doesn't claim it. Um, and Flora is my middle name, which is her maiden name. So oh. this is kind of like a portrait of her without using her in it. That lead with that. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Sorry, is that is that what it? Sorry, I can't see. What is the full title? Oh, just Flora. Okay. I mean, 
that's a really interesting fact to, or just an interesting way to frame this whole uh, image right here. And I, I, that's fantastic. How, how are we doing on time? We're just about out of it. <laughs> okay. Um, I also just wanted to mention the work of Aaron Turner, um, who teaches at the University of Arkansas, but he also plays with different photographic processes um, and uh, and puts them all together in uh, in installations. And I think that it might be interesting for you to look at his work. I, I feel like he's used the Van Dyke process, platinum palladium, and different other processes together to speak about um, what different what those processes mean to people and what especially what those processes mean for a person of color to use them um so i think it might be yeah fascinating for you to do a little research about him thank you for that yeah i feel so lucky that i've been included in your moments <laughs> in, in everyone's moment here and i thank you for all of you for sharing your just brilliant work Absolutely. Shana, thank you so much for being uh, the most generous and amazing respondent. Uh, yeah, we feel so lucky. I know that Aspen, Chris, and I just feel so lucky to have you with us. Um, so Pleasure guys, so thank you so much. Yeah, I'm so proud of all of you guys. <laughs> Congrats. Um, yes, everyone unmute. Let's give a round of applause to everyone. That was so well done. I'm so proud of all of you. Thank you, Shana. <laughs> And it's so great that these, these recordings are going out into the world. Anyone who has any doubts about the depth, you know, and the range and the commitment of our students um, really will be impressed with um, just how committed you all are and how hard you're working and how much skill and courage um, you're all expressing. We're all very proud of you. Thank you so much. And thanks, Shana. That was wonderful. Thank you for having me. And thanks for feeling so comfortable sharing all of your stories, everybody. I yeah. know it's not easy. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Bye, Bye everybody. Don't worry. Thanks again.